This video is intended for entertainment purposes only. People that know how to carve pumpkins are probably watching me and cringing right now. <laughs> Hi everybody. Today we're going to be turning this pumpkin into something quite fun. And we're going to be using our Cricut machines as a stencil. My name is Kelly and let's get clacking. So we're going to start in Cricut Design Space. I'm going to go to the Images panel and I'm going to select a pumpkin face. So I'm going to search for pumpkin to see what comes up. Now that's quite a plain pumpkin, so I'm going to see if we can find something a little bit funnier. That one's a little bit too complicated. <laughs> so I've just tried a few different search terms, and this one I've gone with is spooky face. This one seems to be like quite a cool one that we could use. This one I really like. It's still quite simple, but it's um, going to be nice to use, especially as this is my first ever pumpkin carving, so... Let's see how it goes. Okay, so I think we're gonna stick with either that one or this one. Let's add it to the canvas and then we can make our final decisions. I'm gonna go with the slightly scarier one because I think it'll look a little bit nicer. Now the area that I'm gonna be using on my pumpkin is around 10 centimeters high. So I just need to make this a little bit bigger. Let's go with around nine centimeters. And then quite literally, we're going to send this to cut out of vinyl because it'll be nice and easy to um, stick it onto the pumpkin and then use it as a stencil to cut it out. So we click make it, make sure we turn on our machines. So the vinyl's all loaded. I'm just going to click continue. And then I'm going to select the vinyl setting, send it to cut, and we'll weed it on that side. Let's try this again, shall we? Right, so I have my decal cut. I initially cut it that size, but as you can see, that is too small. So I cut it bigger, but don't worry, this won't go to waste. I've got eight more pumpkins downstairs. So I'm gonna use this for that one. So what I did was I took my transfer tape, burnished it on, flip the vinyl over, Pull the backing off the vinyl, Darth say, and then we stick the vinyl onto El Pumpkino. Now, I want to look for a nice section of the pumpkin, because as you can see, there's like a bit of a chach side over there, and that side's a bit yellowy as well. So that, I want that to be the back, I want this to be the front of El Pumpkino. And also because it's actually a little bit flatter here. I should probably do all of the other stuff first. So as normal, we fold it in half and apply the vinyl from the middle. Or maybe what I should do is try. Can you see I've done this lots? <laughs> maybe we should use this section because it's nice. I want to use that, but it's too... Like, that's perfect and that is perfect. But that is like awkward, you know? Okay, so I'm gonna try and stick it there. Apply from the middle. Oh, I suppose we should probably check how high this is gonna go as well. <laughs> so I'm just gonna try and put it in the middle. Obviously you guys can't see this, but that is what she looks like. Then we apply it like that. Make sure to get it in the crevices. Okay, we still gotta cut the pumpkin open in any case to hollow her out. Now we pull off the transfer tape. Okay, you'll notice it doesn't stick immediately, but that's because vinyl is obviously not meant to go on pumpkins. We're pretty much just using this as a stencil. So I suppose you could probably use, if you wanted, whoo, as I said, vinyl's not meant to go on pumpkins. Stay. So we can use paper if you want to reuse them. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my nice, sharp, stabby implement, and I'm going to trace it. Probably should use a smaller knife, but I don't really have one. And I just cut myself. Careful kids, knives are sharp, if you didn't know that. Okay. It's actually a nice soft pumpkin. And I sharpened my knives just before doing this so that they would be super sharp. Nowhere near perfect but we're not going for perfect in this household. I hope that lighting's a little bit better now. Made some changes to the setup and this is 
guaranteed to fall on my head at some point. If it does, I will leave that footage in because it's going to be funny as all you know what. My words weren't even cold. <laughs> Okay, so moving the pumpkin around seems to help quite a bit. What I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna cut out the top. Now I've seen a lot of people, what they do is they kind of cut it sideways so that it doesn't fall in. Because if you cut it straight down, the top of the pumpkin might fall in. So if you cut it sideways, it kind of rests in there. I've got quite a thin knife, so it's not gonna be too chunky and too difficult to work with. Whoa. Oh my word. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> ah. Our pumpkin has claimed our first knife, but luckily I brought a spare. And this one's obviously significantly longer, which is why I didn't really want to use it. But let's try. M maybe let's try not doing such deep incisions. Maybe let's try just doing, you know, narrower ones. Best circle ever. Trying with a slightly deeper incision this time. Okay, that worked quite nicely. Whenever you're doing this, never have the blade towards your face, kids. 101 of what not to do. And the award for the worst wor worst carved pumpkin goes to... Oh, it smells so good. I love pumpkin. My faces are going to be amazing in this video. I think it's also important to note that I have not ever watched any pumpkin carving video. So I feel like this is kind of a little bit of a disclaimer to this video. Don't do what I do. This video is intended for entertainment purposes only. Please do not take anything said or done in this video as gospel because it, it is not. <laughs> We have breakthrough! <laughs> I believe I may have carved this a little bit too tiny. I know that I'm going to struggle to get all the insides out. I have a plastic baggie that I'm going to keep on the side and put all the stuffies in. So I'm just going to cut off some of this. And in addition to that very sharp implement, I have a spoon, which I'm just going to use to kind of get the insides out, the pips and whatnot. Okay, this isn't too bad, I don't think. I've never pipped a pumpkin, if that's even the right term, I don't know. Okay, this is a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. I thought that this was a bit too small, but it turns out that it actually isn't, which is great. The inside of a pumpkin almost feels a little bit like an orange. There's like sections, segments, obviously where the lines are, but they aren't, there are only a couple of them and they're quite easy to get through. And then very much like an orange, it obviously has the seeds and everything, but it doesn't have all the liquid. Kind of interesting. If you've ever wondered what the inside of a pumpkin looks like. <laughs> the vinyl started coming off when I touched it. I'm just going to try and dip out some of the innards. I'm sure you've taken the innards out of a butternut before. Those little stringy bits get stuck. And that's kind of what I'm struggling with because it's sitting up at the top. And I'm struggling to get the spoon in it to get those off. Ooh! Instead of trying to pull it towards you, push it underneath. That helps. This feels so dodgy. My hand is literally orange. I am happy with that. I'm gonna go wash my hands because they are orange and I will be right back. A few moments later. All right, I'm back and now we're gonna carry on with our pumpkin carving. Now there's still a couple of bits of stuff inside the pumpkin, but you know what, that's fine. So I'm gonna take our obnoxiously large knife and let's see how we get with just a slightly bigger indent. 
See, this is where you need, you need like a pocket knife or something like that. Because this is just too big. Okay, so I'm just trying to do the main long bits first. And I realize that you can't really see this. Let me see if I can fix this quickly. I'm also trying to kind of move it inwards as opposed to outwards. Because I'd rather have to cut away more than have cut away too much. Maybe what I can also do is something like this. So you cut away at the front, the top layer. Ha. So instead of trying to cut it out one bit at a time, or for the entire bit, we just cut it away bits at a time. Much better. There we go. Because now we can just go straight through. It looks so great. Look at that. You can see right through and you can see all the dangly bits because I will clean it up. Okay, we'll clean it up at the end, but I want to get the majority of the carving done. At least now we've got a little bit of a process so we know what to do. broken through so now the guts are all gonna go on the inside well some of them I oh, making a mess okay that's pretty much the eyes done they do look a little different but that's okay okay now for the last part El mouth I'm hoping that the mouth will be a little bit easier to do because it's a lot bigger so it's less of a tight space that you have to maneuver in. Let's see. It is really hard to stick within the lines sometimes. So I'm just going to kind of create new ones. I'm loving this, absolutely loving this. People that know how to carve pumpkins are probably watching me and cringing right now. <laughs> okay, so I have found that kind of the dig and twist method is working really nicely for me. I'm not really sure if that's an actual method, but it seems to be making quite a difference quite quickly, as you can see. So if you're trying this at home, maybe try that method. I think that we're pretty much done. I'm just going to do a little bit of cleanup. There's obviously a lot of guts inside the pumpkin, so I'm going to chuck that all out. And now I'm just going to do a little bit of cleanup as there's some, you can't really see, but there's some little bits hanging around in the front that I want to get off like that. That is so exciting. So that is our pumpkin. A little bit worse for wear, but let's take a look-see with the light off, mostly, and let's see what it looks like with a little candle inside it. Okay, I've got these little candles, um, LED candles, and I'm actually just gonna plop them inside. Depending on the light, I might just use two of them, but let's turn the light off and see what it looks like. So what do you think? I think it looks super, super cool. Obviously you can still see the, the lights quite a bit, but that looks amazing. 
Using your Cricut to make a stencil on the front of your pumpkin is obviously an extra step, which you don't really need. But for me, it's just one thing that takes one less stress off my list. I don't have to worry about everything being even. It won't be lopsided, none of that. So using your Cricut is a great way to get your perfect carved pumpkin. Thank you very much for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up and leave a comment to let me know if you are going to be carving your own pumpkin. I hope that it'll be much better than mine. I hope to see you in my next video and remember, be kind to someone today. See you soon.